In this episode, I'm going to cover creating an App Engine standard application in Eclipse today, and I'll be creating the application from a Maven archetype, and I'll debug the application once I've created it. So to get started, I'm going to go to my Eclipse IDE, and this Eclipse IDE, I've already installed the Google Cloud tools for the using or creating applications for the Google Cloud platform. And if I look down below, I see the G and I can see that I'm signed in. If I click on the checked icon, all services available, it takes me to an, the embedded browser and shows me the status of the platform, the Google Cloud platform. So that's a fantastic. So it's all green. Good to go. And now I'm going to go to the guide in which I'm going to follow in and process here. So there are some prerequisites you could install. In this guide, they're using the terminal to get going. In my tutorial today, I'm gonna to use the same process, but everything in Eclipse. So in Eclipse, I have Java 8 installed, and I also have Java EE Eclipse version installed. In this case, it shows you the MAME version and the Google Cloud Tools platform is installed. So what I will be using as Maven, but I will be using the embedded Maven version in Eclipse. I won't have to have it installed on my desktop, but you could do that as well. You could ins simply install the application by using this command right here, Maven generate. Instead, today I'm gonna to show you how to uh, generate the application from Eclipse using the same Maven command, but from Eclipse, which I think is a little bit shorter process than doing it from the de or from the terminal or command prompt in the case. And I want to point out, okay, so the App Engine version as of today, it may increase by the time you re this video is released. So come back to the guide and copy the version. And I'm going to use Java 8. And I won't use the cloud tooling. That's important to note because if you want to use a flex project, you'll need this cloud tooling. I'll do that in another episode. Okay, so my app ID, I'll provide that. That's a dynamic. I need to provide that. And I'll show how to do that in the clips. And I'll provide this filter as well. And I'll show how to do that. So I'm going to go to Eclipse. The first thing I need to do, because Eclipse doesn't have the catalog for the archetypes installed, it may in your case, uh, it may not. So let's go to Preferences. I'm going to type in Maven up at the top. It will go to the Maven category and Maven index or what as such. I want to look for archetypes and I want to add a remote catalog. Well, I've already added a Maven Central. Well, let me show you how to do that. Add remote catalog. I'm going to provide that link to add in the video description below. The same for the guide that will be provided in the description below. So this URL is repo1maven.org, maven2, or archetype, and I'm going to call it Maven Central. Okay, now I have a more archetypes to select when I generate my application. Apply and close. The next step is I'm going to right click on my workspace. By the way, you can turn on workspaces by going up and selecting top level elements, projects, and then working sets. So in my workspace, I'm going to use a working set and call GCP. I'm going to go new, other, and select Maven project. Maven project next. And now I'm going to define my workspace location because I want to set a rememberable location so I don't accidentally delete it for the future. So I'm going to say training and in that training GCP app engine, app engine standard. And I'm going to select open and click next in this case. So this case, I want to select and uh, filter only the app engine project. So that's com dot uh, Google. Let's look at that again in the guide. You can see at the end here exactly what the archetypes. So I could copy this as well, go back and paste that in. It filters the catalog based on Maven Central, which I just added to the Eclipse preferences. And I'm after, you can, by the way, you can install these other projects, but I'm after the standard archetype. So I'm going to select that. And the next, I'm going to select. Now I'm going to name my project ID mountains and then hyphen server and the same for the artifact ID. By the way, artifact ID is the, the project name that will show up over here on the left. So I'm going to go mountains server. 
Why did I pick mountains? Well, that was just an arbitrary name. I thought, well, maybe I'm going to make a mountains application that lists mountains. It's uh, just something I'm picked. So I'm going to name my package com.gawcat dot uh, mountains for more for my project name and then it's going to be my server side classes on another video i will cover in my playlist i will cover building some client side classes in javascript okay so i'm going to use java 8 i'd like to do that i got to set this to false because i want to use a standard project and then i need to paste in the app engine version so i'm going to go to the guide that will be linked below that was that's over to the left and i want to paste this the app engine version increased quite quickly so always come back to this and get the latest and i'm going to paste that in here it's a a variable but i'm going to paste in 1963 and i have an app id i've created a google platforms project you don't have to do this this is optional but i'm going to paste it in i've created a project on google cloud tools our google cloud platform dashboard go to that i show that in another episode earlier on in my series and i'm going to use the default configuration true for a JSTL because I'll come back and show how to use that. I want to use Objectify. It'll add the Objectify library in this case into the Palm configuration and I am all set. So quickly review. I always like to review my configuration because I make a lot of mistakes here but it's easily to come back and redo this. Mountain server, mountain server application uh that's just an arbitrary name and here's my example url this is the domain i own mountain server and all the attributes java a is true cloud tools up because i want a standard configuration and here's my version i have a link below okay then i'm all set click on finish and my application will generate over here on the left as you can see the artifact id becomes the project name and it simply generates let's look at the palm configuration quite quickly just cover the architecture here the palm is the directions for the maven configuration and we have the dependencies listed at the top and we can say okay i have the app engine dependencies it should have objectify in here here's objectify so fantastic i'm ready that's a nice library to use for data persistence for the data store and some of the others i won't cover in great detail okay so that's just basically the directions for this project and it's important to note that i am using java 1.8 i have the java 1.8 jdk installed with eclipse and eclipse is using that and you can see the library over here is set to java 1.8 okay how do i debug my project i'm going to close this i want to look at source main i want to load up the servlet in a in a web servlet container that could host this how do i do that okay well that's not covered i cover that installing the tools here in this guide well i'm going to show how to add a server and debug that so what i want to do is go to the debug perspective and i already have the debug and if you don't see the bug over here you have to go to window perspective debug and it might be different on on your id or you, on your operating system i'm going to go to debug if you don't see that go up to window like i said before okay what i'm looking for is the servers tab and what i want to do is drag it over so it has its own space and in the servers there's no servers configured i'm going to click on this because this leads me to what i need to create you can go there's other ways to get there and you can go eclipse preferences and do it and i'm going to add an app engine server if i don't see that i can type in google and add it if you don't see this in your list you need to install the google cloud tools platform tools um, for Eclipse and that you can go to the marketplace and install it and I'm going to click next because I'm going to use the default localhost server name I could name it if I have multiple projects I may want to install multiple servers with different configurations for those projects I can name them differently here I'm going to run my server on port 8080 I'm going to click next okay mountain server I'm going to click add here if this doesn't show up in your list, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you how to do that, how to make it show up in the list here. And I'm going to click on that, double click, moves it to the right. I can drag it as well. I'm going to click on finish 
And I can see if I expand that tree, the app engine tree, I could have multiple modules here to run in this server instance. Okay, so it's gonna be my mountain server. Yeah, I can, so to debug it, but before I get there, I'm gonna go back to the Java perspective and right click and go preferences or properties. And we're gonna look at facets. It's important to note the facets are automatically set up if they aren't, um, you can come here and click on Add App Engine Java Standard, and there'll be additional properties you have to adjust here to configure that. Feel free to ask me in the comments below if you don't see something particular set up. A Java 8. One more important note, it, it will automatically configure if you go right click, and I can go Maven and select Update Project as well and I can select Maven, update, update that project, and typically it will automatically configure those settings. It's done on, on the project uh, creation as well, but just in case if something breaks down, those are the places you go to do that. Okay, so back to the debug perspective up here on the right, I clicked on that button, and I'm gonna start, right click on it, and I'm gonna start in debug mode. You could start it in run mode. Debug mode means I could break point on the server side, which is fantastic. If I wanna work the, work the project, it can break there. Okay, so this means it brings up the embedded browser, so that means everything is working. So I'm gonna go back to the Java perspective and just say, okay, I can see more. I can click on this, go back to the debug perspective, just kind of running that gauntlet there so you can see what I'm doing to, and how I get there. One of the important links in the, the console, if you want to go to the emulated browser dash, this is like emulating some of the things, the features that are running. You can see the data store locally, which is great. You don't have to run it like it's a remote server. You're running a local server, which has the features built in like data store persistence and task queues. You can see that. Let me just minimize this so we can see a little bit more. We can do search, full text, it shows the documents, it persists. I won't cover all these features, just wanna show you how to get to those links. So if you don't see the console, like if you have multiple instances up here running, you can go over here and switch to those instances and the, the console instances. In this case, I'm in an App Engine console and we're running on localhost 8080. So now I can debug my project. So I'm gonna go back to the Java perspective and just look at the, uh, the directory our, uh, that it built. So we have the mountain server, we have one servlet, and it's defined up here, pretty cool with an annotation, and it's running on the hello. If so, if I do forward slash hello in my name, that will take me to this servlet. So that's kind of cool. If we look at the source main web app folder, this is where the static resources are stored. We have an app engine web XML. This gives me directions on how the standard app, standard app engine configuration should run when it's published to the Google Cloud Platform. The web XML is the servlet container directions on how to be configured. So the index JSP page, because I'm using JSTL as an option, I can use server variables in the index. And, and you can do different things on the server side there. So that's pretty cool. And then the logging properties, that tells the console how it outputs. And this is particularly important, how I can output on the, when it's published. So that concludes this video today on how to create a project from an archetype all done in Eclipse and it really makes it a quick way to bootstrap, kick the tires, and then uh, we can talk about how we could publish that project in a later episode. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks and I'll catch you later.